welcome. If we could please stand to the Pledge of Allegiance and hold the sign. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. followed by five numbers. 
This was a living connection to actual events which have been increasingly denied and forgotten since 1945. This frame photograph and test is respect respectfully presented to Farmington High School in hope that future students can see what in a few more years will not exist as it does today, a sign of witness to real history. I want to thank my wife, Linda, for doing what I can't do for myself. I also want to credit the owners of celebrations within the printing of the test and John Johnson at Hobby Lobby for doing the Madden training. I'm requesting three things. <laughs> <laughs> One, mount this piece to the wall and don't go out to be hanged by the frame makers as they will eventually fail. Two, put it in a place where it can be seen by a person who can walk right up to it and clearly see the photo and read the text. Three, this piece is covered with museum glass that is supposed to protect it from UV rays. Even so, we will put it in direct sunlight, but this will also have the photographs survive by hopefully hopefully will be many years of exhibition. Thank you. And that's for my husband Jack Wood. <laughs> who was my last day. <laughs>
Ms. Burnett's been a super set for us. I know ordinarily perhaps um, we wouldn't consider giving them this award. However, um, she began the year filling in on a maternity leave position, uh, spending eight weeks, was it? It was a full quarter. Yeah, an entire quarter in the classroom. Uh, looking at some scores that we recently got back, I can tell you instruction did not wane with her in there, uh, which would sometimes be a concern of itself. Uh, while she was in Florida, we had an unexpected health issue arrive, uh, arise uh, with one of our staff members, and she started texting Mr. Bryan and myself, emailing us from Florida, willing to jump in and cover that spot as soon as she returned. Um, so, she has done nothing but think about our kids, think about our school, and has always had them, uh, their best interests in mind. Um, even today, last week, I told her, I might have something I need you to do on Tuesday. She's like, well, if it's Sunday, can you let me know? Uh, she's also trying to babysit when she can. Uh, and so, uh, Ms. Burnett, I couldn't think of anybody more deserving of this that has uh, touched the students and hearts and minds of Lincoln this year than you. So thank you for all that you do for us and our students.
We are working on what's called peer review uh, for the storm shelter. This is a requirement, even though it's not FEMA funded, it is a requirement for any uh, official storm shelter. Um, they're working through a few comments and there will be some uh, changes to, you know, to the drawings, not to the overall layout, and nobody will see them really, but we do need to address a few items as we uh, move through and, and what the peer reviewer does, it's an outside architect, construction engineer, uh, they review our drawings and, and based on their expertise, they will make suggestions and we'll compare it to what's required in the code and, and make the necessary modifications. Uh, and then once that peer review is complete, uh, they provide a letter that then is provided to the school district that allows, it will keep that for your records to certify that this is an official ICC 500 storm shelter. Uh, that's just kind of the process that uh, we're going through right now. Obviously, any changes will coordinate with Matt and Mark and Brock Miller. Uh, do not anticipate significant ones, but there are a few that we're coming across that okay, we need to address that. So, just to make sure we have the, the utmost safety for the building in case we uh, get it. So. Um, multiple schools front, uh, package, which is the remainder of the bond issue work. Uh, we have completed the uh, bid documents. Uh, we will be going to the printer tomorrow morning and distributing them to bidders uh, by noontime tomorrow. I hope to have a set with me to say, here they are. I didn't quite get to the printer fast enough. So um, those will be out tomorrow. Uh, we do anticipate taking bids on the 11th of February, which will allow us to present them to the board for review and approval on the 18th of February. Um, from there, uh, assuming approval and, and uh, authorization of contract, um, the actual on-site construction will start in May. That will primarily be uh, at the high school athletic field entrance. Um, uh, we've talked with Matt and Mark and, and Mr. Bacon at the high school uh, and say, you know, he's okay to us to uh, start building in May, uh, the early part of May, to get a jump start on the athletic field entrance. Um, and then uh, that will hopefully allow us to get done in time for school to start and then obviously fall sports to begin and be able to use it. Um, the remainder of the work, the bulk will be started uh, right after school is out. Um, all the secure entries we are targeting to be done by on or about August 10th. Uh, the athletic field entrance by August 24th, which would be the start of school. Uh, and then the high school cafeteria, October-ish. Uh, the one thing that we are gonna kind of try and push the contractor to do is get it under roof before the end of summer. And that way, once school starts, they're just doing finished work and no heavy work inside the building because of where it's located with cafeteria and such. So, um, those are the updates on the multiple schools package. I did want to show you an image of uh, the proposed athletic field entrance for Hale Memorial Stadium. Um, what we have here, it's, it's relatively basic. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles showing everything, but we have a small ticket booth in the center. You'll have a, a gate, a rolling gate on either side. We have the marquee showing the name of the stadium. The night head, the night head in the center will be similar to the one on the field house right now that will be backlit. Um, we'll have up and down lighting that will permanently light the flags. Um, and then we'll use black on the uh, railings, uh, guardrails and fencing on either side. Uh, on one side, it will extend to the uh, retaining wall. On the opposite side, it will extend to the walkways leading up to the uh, high school uh, on the other side. So um, once you go in this, we will have a concrete walk that extends down to the track area concrete sidewalk that extends around in front of the field house to the opposite side of the field, as well as connects to the high school side of it. So we're gonna provide a, a nice walkway 
down and around that would provide easy access and it would be all accessible. Um, in addition, we are providing an asphalt roadway at the bottom of the retaining wall there at that entrance uh, so that the ambulance and, and field access crews can come directly in there um, and sit and park right next to the field house. So, any questions about any of the projects? I don't know, did I stay under five minutes, Matt? Almost. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Visitor side seating, handrails. This has been talked about. We've not done anything in our work. We're doing that here. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're doing that as a school district. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be ADA accessible. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you all again for your time. <clears throat>
um, you have effects that later on come up to the secondary level. So we decided that we were going to start to push in with an, initi an initiative. We received a grant from Conve uh, Prevention Consultants. Uh, Jamie Myers is a great friend to the district. He works out of RALA. Con prevention uh, Consultants are um, a great agency that will step up and provide resources. Uh, we immediately took that into hand, and at the beginning of the semester, I believe we had a big professional development on the 16th of September, and we rolled out with counselors and physical education and health teachers to good for drugs. Um, most of that is a basis, is an evidence-based drug intervention uh, prevention program that talks about goal setting. So with kindergarten students, you're talking about setting goals, making wise decisions, what do you do when your friend might pressure you to do something? And what truly is a good friend? And that starts at age five. And then you work up. It partners beautifully with character education and just adds in that additional supplement and layer to what we already have. Nothing new adds in the supplements and, and reaches with a little bit deeper. The second area that they wanted to focus on was mental health. Um, I believe that you know we stood in front of you many times last year and you've asked counselors, social workers, SROs, everybody. We spent an, an, an exorbitant amount of time focusing on our mental health, our suicide prevention awareness and um, education. Um, we believe that that's never ending. Um, I think that we did a, a good job as coming together as a team to determine what else needed to be done and the agencies that we have in Farmington are wonderful to be able to work with. Uh, we did want to continue those two initiatives, but we also, with the strategic plan, broke into all 10 components this year with um, the WISP model. So you'll hear more and more about the WISP model and things that we can do. I'm only going to mention a few because it is a draft and I don't want to take a lot of your time. Um, but again, I mentioned within health education, uh, the component one, we're going to continue with our two good for drugs model, goal setting, um, self-reflection, and self-awareness. Um, we know we need to get that a little bit into the uh, family and out to the community with what we're doing, so we will dig a little bit deeper into that. I'll say physical education and physical activity programs. Your elementary principals have done a wonderful job in going back. And one of the first things I know when Jerry and, and Angie sit on that committee, when we first started having conversations, everybody said, oh my goodness sakes, recess is used as a punishment, or they're taking things away. Um, or remember we had that, that discussion, and everyone was completely appalled, and the doctors were like, why on earth would you do that? And that's a simple conversation that principals started to have with teachers that said, that's actually within your minutes, activity, recess, we're not taking that away. So it is physical activity um, and PE that you will see actually that fulfills our DESI components, and, and that's just laying it out there. And having your leaders step up and have candid conversations with staff members that may or may not want to hold that hostage. It's no longer going to be a hostage. So again, conversations from principals, they're the leaders in this. Your OTs, PTs, and physical education teachers are unbelievable as well. And they work as a partner. When I went to Caitlin Wiles as the physical therapist and uh, Samantha Lee and Lola and talked to them about um, sensory uh, pathways, it just looks like a fun little thing that is out there in the hallways. It's not just a fun little thing. It's very much there as a research-based um, integrative educational practice for physical activity. Uh, Kaylin, of course, is extremely wise with, with her doctoral um, degree in this area. So as she's talking to me, she said, you know, that's primitive reflex integration. And I said, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> and, and she said, with that, it, it actually talks about the core reflexes and how the brain um, is adapting. And, and, and she said there's research out there, and I'd like to bring in a presenter to talk to all the PE teachers and staff about how we're losing that in the childhood years because they're not out doing some of the things that they used to do whenever, quote, we were, you know, back in the day. They're not doing those things. We're losing that. So teachers quickly going through the sensory pathways three or four times a day help that. The OTs, PTs, the school education teachers are watching what is occurring. I think you can ask any of the ladies here. They'll tell you, oop, not doing that core area correctly. And I can see the connections within the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere aren't necessarily clicking the way in which they should. Simple things that look just, quote, fun to us or cool or it's not. It's research-based. There's reasons behind it. Your PE teachers, health teachers, OTs, PTs, counselors, uh, social workers, SRO, everybody really truly is trying to get a good foundation or a portion of what can around the whole child. So hopefully you'll take a look at the strategic plan. I only went over a couple. There's dozens of wonderful things down there from each of the area committees. There's tons of people that put in a lot of time and energy into this. Um, <coughs> we would like to show you this and, and if you would take
take a, a look at it over the next 30 days and we'll come back to you with a couple changes probably after the 31st if the committee has to recommend. But can't speak highly enough about what these people have done and how they're moving us forward in, in directions that some of the places aren't necessarily taking. So thank you for your time. Thank you.